welcome back to this tutorial and uh, in this second part or the third part of the tutorial uh, we are going to look at uh, how to handle unstructured data and one of the tools that we're going to use is uh, mongodb mongodb is a very very robust uh, database management platforms that allow us to manipulate analyze and visualize unstructured data but before we start that we need to first of all uh, learn how we can uh, sign up for a free mongodb account and then link it to our computer and then after that i will show you how you can link it to the coding platform vs and then straight away we'll start coding so the first part is assuming that you don't have got a mongodb account you can easily find or uh, obtain one by signing up on the website so just google mongodb and then uh, you go to mongodb.com and then check on the atlas database and then sign in uh you if you don't have a, an account go to sign up give your name so i'll use the technical then i'll do coding my last name and then you have a password that you can easily remember and accept I'm not a robot and then make sure you have your email I've forgotten that the technical that is my email ke then sign up sorry to add at gmail the domain name gmail.com this should be good to go so i'm gonna save it let me add my password there then uh, i can go to my gmail account and verify it verify the email and then continue so now that i've set up the account uh you can select what is your goal today i'll just say learn mongodb what type of application are you building i'll leave it to others and uh i can do java maybe it should be able to finish setting up the account so let me just do learning finish so now we have got different options here uh you want to have this the free one and then select the closest region to your place mine is uh north virginia east cluster zero uh that should not be a problem and then uh, you can create so now you need to specify the the username here i'm gonna have my username all in small letters and this is going to be very very important and then you can have a password of your choice i want to have the simplest one to remember then we had my password and then create a user so sometimes uh the way it works uh mongodb connects from all the computers on your local network so you want to have to make sure that you have got some an ip address that even if you change your location to a different place maybe if you are in a coffee shop or you are accessing this from a workplace or you are accessing this from home or even when you are accessing it from a, a different location generally you want to ensure that you are able to connect to to the network or to your uh, remote server and uh, by doing that the easiest way is to normally set a universal a universal ip address here and uh 
the easiest one is this i'm not sure if it's gonna work but nevertheless let's try it it should be able to work there should be no reason for its failure so once i set this universal address i can change this to okay so now that we have created the the universal IP address, uh, we just need to create, uh, finish creating the user by clicking on creating user and therefore this is our username. The password has aut automatically been hidden. So now I can just click uh, finish and close and that should take us to the setup of our cluster that we have just created. So this cluster is what will allow us to access uh, the resources and uh, we can click on the uh, for now i don't want us to connect it yet just click on uh, the cluster itself so that you can have a look so we have got uh, this is the name of our cluster and uh, you'll have got uh, an ability to create the project but for now just let us stick to these basics uh, understand what we have here and uh, in the next step i'm going to show you how we can make sure that we access these resources by connecting our cluster to uh, our computers or to our local computer so that is it uh, let's uh, now move on to the next part of uh, connecting the to the server and then allow us to access the resources so by default, when we created the cluster, it automatically created three clusters. <coughs> and uh, we can have a look at the three clusters. And then go to security. And then database. Okay. So you can see these are our cluster has been created. We are, we are accessing the Amazon Web Service. It shows my location. This is the free sandbox. It should be free. And then um, we can have a look at the clusters. So we have got the secondary cluster, the primary cluster. Uh, we can click on this. Uh, this is the name of my cluster. Uh, so and this information is going to be very, very useful in our next uh, sessions when we start uh, interacting on how we can access these clusters and uh, even connecting to this uh, database. So the next step is now to connect to the database and uh, we can do that easily by clicking connect and then once you click connect uh, you need to select one of these options so for now i want us to click on uh, shell and then you select uh, your os automatically mine is mac os but i'm going to show you on how you can do that with windows so you just click on windows and then uh, it's going to allow you to select the options. So in my case, you can see already it has created a, a link here. So once I click this, it's going to download. But I'm running Mac and I wanted to demonstrate on Windows. So I'm going to switch my computer to Windows so that I can show you how you do that on Windows. Because most of you uh, are using Windows. Okay, the next step now is to connect uh, your Alice account to your remote computer or your local computer sorry so that is very easy you just come to uh, the option connect option and then you move scroll down to shell once you click on shell uh, select your windows operating system if you're operating on windows and then uh, you want to download the mongo ash so once you download it i've already done that so it's gonna be in your downloads folder but you just need to extract it it's a, a zip file and copy it on your c drive so in my case i've copied it here on my c drive so this is it uh if you open it there's a folder called bin with an executable mongodb file so the next thing now is to set the path so that uh, your local computer can read the path where the mongo ash uh, is uh, stored so to do that on windows uh it's very easy you just need to go to your search bar and do edit path search edit path 
it should be on the control panel click on it uh, go to advanced part click on environment variables and then where you have the path double click on that and then it allows you to edit the path so i want you to uh, click on new and then uh, check where you have it here right click on this or even just click on this section copy the path and then come back to this option here and uh, just paste it and just like that now you have got the c mongo ash blah 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 and uh, okay and then set it okay and you have managed to set the path now we need to move and uh, uh, open our command prompt okay so now the last uh, step is to connect uh, your string uh, or run your connection on the command line so you just copy the link that is provided on your atlas account and then you just uh, run uh, check command prompt and do command prompt on your computer and uh, it should be fairly easy so paste the command prompt and you notice that uh, your name your username is already there run it it's gonna ask you for a password so if it prompts you for a password uh, make sure you type the password that uh, is provided uh -huh. so i'm gonna type my password that's why it's good to keep it simple because when you're typing you're not able to see the exact words and now you can see uh the green showing me that uh, mongodb is connected so in summary uh, we have uh, managed to connect our mongodb account to uh to our local computer and run it through the command prompt now i'm gonna show you the other side of connecting it to vs code so that you do everything on the vs code instead of doing it from the command prompt here so that is the uh the other section of this video so i'm gonna take a quick pause and uh launch the vs code and then show you straight away how to do it okay uh now i can i will show you also how you can connect uh your mongodb to vs code and i think this is the route that you should take because uh it allows you to save the files as a a workspace and also it's just nice and easy to access so open your vs code and then when you go to your vs code uh it's a very simple process uh you just need to go to the extensions uh, let me check extensions click on the extensions part and then just type mongodb so this process requires an internet connection so make sure that you are connected to the internet so it should be this one with a green leaf so it should take uh, less seconds trust workspace and install yes so it's installing mongodb oh it's taking a while depending on your internet speed so it has installed and once it's installed you're gonna see the green leaf here in showing that it has already been installed so when you click that it's gonna take you to this section where you have got the connection and the playground so click on the connection to connect to your atlas account and then once you do that uh click on connect and then it requires you to paste the connection link go to your browser click on connect scroll down to scroll down to mongodb vs code uh, it provides you with the connection link which is this click on that go back to vs code paste it here and then just uh, uh, change your password so i'm just gonna give a random word uh, that we lacked for my password uh, in this case so it says connected and you can see 
it's uh, successfully connected so that's uh, my account is now connected and uh, I can click on the admin let me see click on the playground uh, there's a set of dummy uh, data here to help you get started to learn uh, MongoDB so this is the name of the database let me run it if I run it it's gonna open it yes uh, are you sure you want to run this playground goodness class and MongoDB this connection can be so in the yes so let me run it and see yeah so it has switched uh, to my database here you can also there's a sample data that uh, over a collection here that has been created for you let me run and see if it's gonna run let's make it yes so the data is run you can see it's a, a sales data with the column name item random numbers the price of the item the quantity and the date uh, if you come to your cluster and refresh it you should be able to see the document so you can see automatically it creates a, a database name called test and inside that test we have stored the sales data which specifies each of these and they are stored as documents don't worry about the jargons uh, that is the essence of these lessons in the next set of tutorials we will learn how you can create unstructured data as you can see they are stored in a, a json file format so each of these columns as it was the case for data frames uh, each of the rows uh, in data frames is called a document here and the document is basically a set of files uh, that has got specific information so if i click on this you can see it's a uh, id and then uh, the item name the price the quantity so you can actually create this so that will be a whole introduction lecture to working with unstructured data and then we're gonna do a project on that to illustrate how you do that uh, everything that you do here is updated on your alas account so if you come to your account on the database you should be able to see what's happening on your account you should be here not primary uh huh yeah browse collections yeah and you have got uh, data here so you can see your sales data has been updated in your account and uh, it has got eight rows which are called collections each of them here so whatever you do now remotely or uh, locally in your computer is updated on the cloud as long as you remain connected to the alas account so that is the basics of uh, working with the or connecting your local account to your alas account and then making sure that you just run a test so that um, we are uh, we are very sure that it's working so the whole purpose of this tutorial was to demonstrate how you install mongodb how you can connect it to your local computer using a command prompt and also using the vs code i prefer vs code because it allows you to do everything else on the command prompt uh, with the assist of uh, a graphical interface and that is super cool when you start handling uh, a lot of unstructured data and interacting back and forth with your uh, alas account so that is the essence of this video feel free uh, in the next sections we'll start looking at working with unstructured data and i'll show you how you can create unstructured data how you can query them how you can even show them or visualize them and then finally we're gonna wrap it up with a, a project on this unstructured data so if you like it please share the video like it gives it a thumbs up uh, subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend until next time bye bye